Well, welcome back to the homestead. Today's episode, I got a couple of little minor tasks I want to do, uh, but I kind of want to catch you up where I'm at. So, for the last four or five weeks, I've been working on clearing the right of way uh, for the power lines to come through my neighbor's property. Uh, we had a, a, a hitch with the right of way that we had originally set up whenever we bought the property. That would have only required me to cut about four or five trees on the neighbor's property. That particular neighbor had, is a, a doctor that bought the property and has now donated that to a, a college foundation. So neither one of them are in clear ownership at the moment because it's all in transition. And I can't get right away through either one of them and don't really want to wait until it's all finished up towards the end of the year, uh, only to find out then maybe that the foundation doesn't want me to, to come through there. So we talked to another neighbor and they actually have uh, property directly across from me, so I only have to go through their land. The only drawback is their land was complete woods. And uh, luckily for me, they have horses and they actually want to clear that section of land out so that they can grow some grass in there for horses. So when I talked to them about it, they said, yeah, sure, come on over, cut whatever you need to get you right away and get your power. So hats off to those uh, neighbors because they have been a, a phenomenal lifesaver. And they have been bent over backwards to be easy to, to work with and everything. So really, really happy to have met them and find that I've got such good neighbors out here. But for the last couple of weeks, we've been cutting trees on their place and uh, we finally got all that cleaned up and we've got the right of way easement paperwork signed from them and myself turned into energy and we're on energy's waiting list now to have them come out and start running the poles and, and lines. Uh, they said it would take about a week for them to drop the plans, get the materials in and then four to six weeks uh, on the waiting side. So within a month and a half to two months, we expect to have power on the property here. So while we're waiting on that, <clears throat> my in-laws are going to put a, a house in the clearing next to me over here, and they have to have a contractor come in and do some dirt work for a foundation and have a septic tank put in. And the contractor that they're hiring to do that offered me a cash discount if I hired him to do my septic tank while he's out here so that he doesn't have to transport his equipment back and forth. So I think what we're going to do is go ahead and take advantage of that and <clears throat> hire that same contractor to do my septic while he's doing my in-laws uh, right next to me here. And we're on his waiting list to do that. But before we can have our septic done, we have to have permits. So where I'm at, if you have 10 acres or more of land, you can get an exemption for a septic tank for just a, a standard gravity feed septic system. As long as your house is not within 200 feet of one of the property lines. My, my house is within 200 feet of a property line this direction, so I can't use that exemption. So I'm going to give that exemption to my in-laws, and then I went ahead and hired a contractor to come out and do a perk test on my land. So we've had a, a guy come out and do the perk test, which involves them digging two pits so that they can inspect the soil. And then they take a transit and they shoot lines for where the uh, septic tank's going to be. And then they shoot lines for a primary leach field and a secondary leach field. So in 20 years, say the primary leach field uh, fails and doesn't work anymore, you have somewhere that you can build a secondary leach field. If you don't have room for two leach fields, you can't use a gravity, uh, gravity fed septic system, at least in my state in, or in my county. So that's the requirements I have. So the the guy came out, he did the perk test, and everything looked good to him. He's got a primary and a secondary leach field marked out. He's got the pits dug, and uh, the county has come out and inspected the soil and the septic design that he laid out. They've signed off on it, so I've gotten my uh, perk test permit in. My in-laws have the 10-acre exemption form, so we're up to date on our permits for both septic systems. And as soon as that contractor is freed up in his schedule, uh, within the next month, he's coming out to do both septic tanks. So we're pretty close to having our septic done. And in the meantime, 
I've gone ahead and hired a contractor to come out and do my drywall. So for my drywall, uh, I could hang the drywall myself, but I don't have anybody to help me. Every sheet of drywall upstairs has to be hand carried up a staircase that has a 90 degree turn in it. And I just don't think that I can do that uh, by myself without messing up a bunch of the sheetrock. I don't have an extra set of hands out here to help me do that. So uh, that's one hindrance I have. Another one is I don't excel at floating and sanding sheetrock. I've done it before and I'm frankly just not really good at it. I know I can do it if I take enough time, but this is something I'd rather just go ahead and hire out to a professional, let them come in and do it and be happy with the results and it not take me months to hang the drywall, float and sand it all by myself. So uh, Monday, they're gonna come out and start staging the materials throughout the house. And then Tuesday, they're gonna come out and hang it. And they said it would probably take uh, a day and a half for them to hang all of the drywall for the house. So before they come out to do that, there's two things that I wanna get done. One, I wanna to cobble together a better set of steps for them to carry all the drywall in. Uh, for the last couple years, I've just been using a stack of cinder blocks to get in and out of the house, but that's not really all that steady. I don't want somebody to have an accident and hurt their leg or twist their ankle or whatever, carrying drywall up and down rickety blocks. So we're gonna cobble together a temporary set of steps, and then we're gonna take everything that's inside of the house, and I'm gonna load it up in my truck and trailer and haul it out of here. And that way there's nothing inside the house for the drywall contractors to be tripping over while they're trying to, to do their work. Once they float in the sand everything and they're out of here, I'm gonna come in right behind them uh, and paint everything. So I don't want anything in the floors that I have to cover up and trip over while I'm painting. So it'll help us both out if I just empty everything out of the house before they go to hang the drywall. So that's the two things I wanna try and focus on today. And uh, if we finish it up early and I've got a little time left, we might do uh, a little bit of work on a gas line for the instant hot water heater, but we'll just have to see where, where the day goes. But for now, let me show you what the uh, septic tank lines are looking like, and then we'll get to work on the steps and emptying out the house. So just a quick overview on the uh, design of the septic tank. This is where the, the septic line comes out of the foundation of the house, and it's a uh, three inch schedule 40. And then you're gonna come about 10 feet out from the house and you'll put the septic tank in. Uh, the septic tank will start at that flag and end at this flag. And from there, you'll shoot a line over to this flag here and put in a distribution box for all the leach field lines to come into. So that's where the distribution box will be right there. And then this pink flag here, uh, he's got them labeled L1, L2, L3, L4. But there'll be a, a leach field line that goes from that flag all the way out to this flag across the field. And these lines are going to be run on contour, uh, meaning that the, the line will be perfectly level. So it may not be straight with the field or, or hill or straight with uh, each other, but they'll be level. So this is where the first line is going to terminate. The second line will terminate right here, this flag, and then it'll run back to here. And it'll take a slight bend. All the way back over to here where it starts. So that'll be the second line. The third and fourth lines are a little bit shorter. This is the beginning of the third line. It's going to run out here to the flag by this pit. You can see the flag there. And then the fourth line is going to terminate right here. And we'll start back over here. 
and that's going to be the entirety of the septic system. Now down here, you can see this blue flag is marked as a secondary area. So if the primary area of the leach field fails, we can come down to the secondary area and put in four lines down here. And that's the, the end of the secondary area. So that's the, the layout of it. And then for the perk test, they have to dig a few pits about four to five feet deep. And they have one side of them slanted so that you can walk down into the, the pit to inspect it. And they're just looking to see uh, the composition of the soil. Now, I, I'm not an expert on that, so I couldn't tell you exactly what they're looking for. But he said that uh, this soil was, was about uh, mid-scale. It's not perfect, it's not poor, but it's about medium. And the uh, county inspector has come out and verified that. So we're good to go. Uh, this is a secondary pit. And those will just be filled back in once they're, they're done with everything. All right, so that's the septic system in a nutshell. And the only thing I'm waiting on on that is for the contractor to get to us uh, so he can come out and work the job. Once, once he's available, we're ready to go. Next thing I want to do is jump over to these back steps and see if we can't cobble together something that's going to be a little bit more sturdy than these cinder blocks that I've been using for the last couple of years. So let's go take a look at that. So this is the steps that I've been using. You can see it's just a stack of cinder blocks and they're not fastened together or anything. So they're pretty unsteady. So what we're going to do is cobble together some wooden steps real quick. And to do that, I just went ahead and bought some pre-made stringers and treads from the box store. And uh, we're going to put those up. So this is one of the stringers that I bought. It's just a, a four-step stringer. And uh, we'll attach this end to the rim joist. We'll set this end on a concrete pad so there's no wood touching the ground. And then we'll just fasten the treads to the, to the risers. Alright. <clears throat> so what I've done here is just kind of set the stringers where they're going to be. And that way I can get an idea of where I need to dig out on the ground for the concrete blocks. And now I'm going to go ahead and dig that out and get it leveled up. Alright, so I've got my three blocks uh, pretty much level onto the ground at the height that I want them. So what I did then was I just measured the center of the blocks this direction and put a square on it so that I could uh, draw the center line on the rim joist so that one of my uh, stringers will be right in the center of the block. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set the two end stringers on there and we'll put the middle stringer in, put a tread on it, get the tread to the same height as the porch and then screw the center stringer down and uh, screw the two ends on level at that point. Alright, so now that the stringer is attached at the height that I want the tread to be level, I've just made sure that the stringer was straight up and down, and I'm going to go ahead and attach it. I'm going to mark center on my tread. Line that up in the middle. Go ahead and put a screw on it. Now 
I want to make sure both of my stringers are the same distance in from the ends. And I'm going to use uh, five and a half inches for that distance. And the reason I'm using five and a half inches is I've got some six by six posts and if I actually decided to put uh, handrails on that, I can not just tread out for that post and five and a half is the actual dimension of that. Alright, well that's it for the temporary steps. Uh, I think it's a lot more steady than what the cinder blocks were that I've been using for all this time. And uh, it should help the drywall contractors out having something nice and sturdy to uh, carry all that drywall in with. But this is not going to be the permanent steps. So uh, that's why I didn't use joist hangers and things like that. This is just, just temporary. The permanent steps are going to be built over here behind the French doors and uh, there'll be a ramp that comes out this direction. So. This is just uh, to get me by for right now. So let's go ahead and start uh, getting everything out of the inside of the house so that uh, the drywall contractors have room to put everything. All right, so that's gonna do it for today. Uh, we got the temporary steps behind me built and then we got everything out of the interior of the house. So it's completely empty. And we're ready for the drywall contractor to come by Monday and deliver the drywall and stage it throughout the house. Then Tuesday and Wednesday, he'll come out and actually hang it. So he says he can hang the whole house in a day and a half. Uh, so hopefully by the end of Wednesday, we should be done with getting it hung. They'll take several days more to do the floating and sanding on it. Uh, in the meantime, I've got energy. I'm waiting on them. Uh, they've got to come out and put the poles and string them to get power on the place. And we're probably four to six weeks out for that. And then my septic tank, uh, we're probably three to four weeks out now uh, waiting on him to, to come out and do the septic tank. And then, like I said, the drywall contractor will be here Monday. So things are starting to move along pretty quick. And uh, once the septic tank and the drywall is done then it'll be back to me doing everything but uh, those two things I just didn't feel like it made sense for me to do on my own even though I can uh, the profit margins are not real high on those things and those guys can get them knocked out a lot faster than what I can so we're just gonna go ahead and let them do it and uh, pick it back up from there so anyway uh, till the drywall gets hung up there's nothing more for me to do so till then y'all keep checking back